Welcome back to Crosshair Garage and Salvage, guys. This week I'm teaching my daughter, Caitlin, everything I know about mounting a classic vehicle on a modern chassis. So I've done this a few times and I'm gonna show her some of the things I've learned and probably gonna learn a few things together this week. But the end goal here is to get that thing mounted safely, squarely, and when we put this front clip back together next week, that center line of the wheel is right in the middle of the wheel well, based on the measurements and cuts we make this week. So stay tuned because this is going to be interesting for you guys and probably really frustrating for us. Ow! Oh, face. Ow! Right in the face. At least I have the glasses on. Caitlin, believe it or not, on this table is everything we need to mount that 41 cab on that 2000 F350 chassis. What's that? That's two by two square tubing. What's that? That's two by four square tubing. What's that? That's a laser level. What's that? Soapstone. What's that? Well, that is your mom's Halloween costume. I don't know how that got out here. Yeah, I walked in the house the other day. She had this thing laid out on the floor and she was looking at a wall muttering, oh, is this thing load bearing? <laughs> Most terrifying thing I'd ever seen. What's that hockey puck looking thing? Well, those are uh, cab bushings for a 41 Ford. Did we just become best friends? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> or a hockey puck. <laughs> no, we just smelled that at the same time. All right, guys, welcome back to Crosshair Garage and Salvage. We're working back on Caitlin's 41 Ford. Been a few episodes since we've been on this one. And uh, well, if you haven't caught the stuff in between four episodes ago and now, Here's a little catch you up to speed. We finally got new springs for the front, got the pockets replaced, got it set back down on our spare tires with the help of our friends from Lugnut Guys. We just needed some lug nuts to just throw these things back on. So I went to lugnutguys.com, found the lug nuts for my vehicle, ordered them up, had them super quick, and was able to get this thing set down. You guys can get yours delivered free on any order under $35 using the promo code you see at the bottom of the screen. We also got the frame painted and cleaned up. We got rear shocks mounted. We got the cab firewall cut out and well, ready to move forward because we still need to move this thing forward. I don't know how many inches for sure. That's kind of what this episode's about, but it's going to have to come that way. So what's next? Nothing left to do, but finish it. <laughs> and we're going to start that process by getting some measurements off of the front clip here, getting some measurements off of the chassis, the engine, getting some measurements off of the cab. And so that means we need the measuring tape that you already found, and we're going to need that laser level. All right, now hold tight because we're about to do a lot of measuring. And when I say a lot of measuring, I mean a lot because we're going to have to do most of it twice. <laughs> Hang tight. Get it on the center of the hub. Does that look like it's the center of that hub? Oh, yeah. yeah. You can't lean on it. Yeah, it's close enough. So that's putting our line right here. It's flashing because the battery's almost dead. So let's get our line marked there before it dies. So now we gotta do is find the center of this wheel well. So the center of this wheel arch, Caitlin, um, even though the front kind of goes down and out, we want to just kind of kind of continue that line straight down. Mm -hmm. So using that little stirring stick, go to, actually it looks to me like it's about three feet from what I can see from here. Put that, stand that up straight on the three foot line. On the three foot line, there you go. So basically we want to find, what's half three feet, foot and a half? Yeah. Right, 18 inches. So where's 18 inches? Right there. Next best thing to a string is a carpenter's friend. A level. Don't put it on it. So. That is a really cool. All right, so we've got the laser right here and up here, and we've transferred the line for the center of our wheel well to the top here, which is gonna be important because we need to figure out from here to the connection tab here on the back of this side cowl for the front clip, 
that well actually this tab is going to correspond to this floating tab right here so we can measure off the center line of this bolt forward to the center line here figure out exactly how far from here to this line that we marked on the chassis we need to move the cab and that'll give us our forward cab position right Kayla? I'm, so I'm not good at math, but I am quick about it. Caitlin's got a measurement here for us. What is it, Caitlin? Uh, it looks like 19 and 3 eighths. It looks like or it is? It is. All right, I don't know if the laser is getting picked up on camera, but we are zeroing in at 19 and 3 eighths. We're going to mark the chassis. Is that you got to tell me, I can't see it from here. Yep, that's it. Right there? Yep. 19 and 3 eighths. All right. You can go ahead and move the, move the tape measure. Get out of the way. Oh, and we're going to go ahead. Can't stay in front of the laser, kid. You're, did you bump the laser? I don't know, actually. Bring that tape measure back out here. Why did you bump the laser? I was reaching for my apple juice. I'm just walking over here. Reaching for my apple juice. All right, now we're not we're not doing this because we uh, enjoy it. No, this is what you call precision guesswork, and uh, that's about <laughs> all we're good for here at Crossroad Garage. So this rivet is actually a perfect mark for us. Assuming that that's in a machined position and it's the same on the other side, we'll just draw a line straight off the front of that rivet and that should be our mark. We can to actually, the center of that hole? We can measure it. No, it's not quite the center. We can measure it off something else that's fixed on the, on the chassis, like the back of this trailing arm mount. Measure forward to there and we'll transfer that line to the other side. Beans. Oh, hey there. What's that? You looking for some sweet Crossroad Garage merch? <laughs> I thought you might be. I'll tell you where to get some. Right here, crossroadgarage.com. Or you can click the join button right down here below next to the subscribe button. For a buck ninety-nine a month, you can join the Shade Tree Nation and you'll get yourself this exact shirt. I mean, not the dirty, sweaty one I'm wearing right now, but the same shirt I'm wearing right now to the first 20 channel members. We got like five spaces left. So if you guys join today, I promise within the next six to 48 weeks, I'm gonna get one in the mail to you. I will, I promise. And for those of you who are already channel members, I know you're waiting and I'm sorry, but it's coming, don't worry. One last line I forgot we needed here on the cab don't is worry. a line, oh man, <laughs> did you see that? Did you just do that perfectly? I know, I just moved it and like landed there perfectly. There's a little hole. Go over a little bit. Mm, right there. It's actually a G. That little tab right there is what we're trying to transfer the line to the bottom of the cab so that we know when we slide it forward, we got lined up with the line we already put on the chassis. So, Caitlin, down there at the bottom, no, the bottom of the cab, right there, give us a good like two inch mark right down that line right there. Oh. Mark better than whatever that is you put on there. <laughs> Pretty good. You happy with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. By the way, what's blue and doesn't weigh very much? Light blue. <laughs> yeah. So now we can get a rough measurement from there to there. So the question is, is the hole we cut wide enough to bring it forward nine inches? It is on this side, it is on this side, and the cab actually has been moved around. It needs to go that way. Um, so this is more than... 
That should be more than nine inches. That's not the line we measured to. Yeah, it's this, which was which was 19 and 3 eighths plus this, right? No. We're bringing this up to here. Ooh. So that this will be 19 and 3 inches from here. Ooh. 19 and 3 inches from there. Gotcha. Okay, so. Well, that, ma that makes a lot more sense. Okay, so now we've got a line there and a line there. We're going to bring them together. That's the plan. That, that sounds good. What we need to do, though, is get some measurements for height to see how much lower we can get this because I do think, based off of this being the line for the top of that front clip, there's going to be a real question about where that wheel well is going to sit here. So, nope, not there. On top. So, we're going to come across here. So, I want you to measure from the bottom of this well opening here to the bottom of this where are we at eight and three eights, yeah, like looks three like. eights, eight, three eights. all right so using this as a base here we got eight and three eighths we're going to call it eight and a half plus i think based off of my 47 chevy like minimum two inches of clearance because i I don't think that clip is going to be wider than these tires. Okay, so like the top of that, like middle? So it's like probably going to be like right in this area here. Well, and that, and there too, I don't know what wheels and tire setup we're using yet. So right. we're just we're just trying to get height here. We can figure out spacing on the on the I wheels. I would say, what, how, would it affect it like a whole bunch of in three inches? Probably not, because we do want this to be a workable, usable truck that we can tow with. Right, because yours... So we do need some suspension yours travel. Yours rubs a little bit, like, on truck turns. So eight and a half plus three is 11 and a half, which puts it right here. So let's get that laser again over here. That's our horizontal line right there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's basically on the 14. It's like 14 and a 16th. And then over here, over here, we're right here. So the tape measure. So I can actually see the witness mark on this tab for where the top of that is. So go into that, we're at an inch and three quarters. So 15 and three quarters needs to be the top of this, which means that cab. Why 15 and three quarters? Okay, hold on. Let me do that math differently. <laughs> that top of the front clip mm -hmm. is at 15 and three quarters inches if it's sitting where the cab is sitting right now. Okay, 15 and three quarters minus, what did we say? 11 and a half? Mm -hmm is what? Four and uh, three quarters, half, like one eighth, I don't know. Doing math on a calculator in three, two, one. I was right. Not four and an eighth, four and a quarter. Uh -huh. All right, so that means we've got a four and a quarter inch variance and we need to drop that cab four and a quarter inches from where it's currently sitting right now. So just in terms of one, two, three, bringing this forward nine inches, that's gonna put it right here. Do we have four and a quarter? Not quite. We're probably gonna to need to take another inch out of this cab right here. But otherwise, we should be in good shape. All right, so here's part of our dilemma, guys. This part of the cab is actually empty space. So you can see where the floor ran right there, down, and it met the floor down there. We basically just cut that out. Um, I think to get it down, we're gonna end up having to cut that out. And we're definitely gonna have to cut out more of the floor to get it down over top of the transmission and on the back here Caitlin we got to come down four and a quarter 
Um, right now we don't have the room, but remember this has to go forward nine inches and right here the cab actually comes down. Uh, that'll go down. Like so that'll get, definitely go down four inches. Get a tape measure. I don't, get the tape measure. Uh, you mean you don't have one? It's sitting right there. Come forward from here nine inches. Where do we land on the frame? Um, here. Nine inches. Right there. Right here. What's the distance between here and the cab? Here and yeah. the cab? Yeah. Boy, it's only like two and a half two inches. And a half, yeah. Which means we might be. Oh boy. Means we might either be putting a nice rake in the way this cab sits and we actually get it running downhill a little bit mm. or we're going to have more space above the tire in the front that's fine and it, it would leave room for a bigger tire i was just going to say if, if i ever want to put like chad tires or something <laughs> you don't want to do that i probably won't but if i feel like it one day when i'm 30 years old what I size what size are those right now 265, 75, R16s. What's the diameter? 30 oh. inches. That's 30 inches. And this opening, this opening was 36 inches, which means we have three inches in the front, three inches in the back. And bam, if we had three inches on the top, that would be really evenly spaced. Shoot. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Go, go back to what you said. This is how many? 30. And that's how many? 36. Oh, I thought you said that was 33 and that was 36. I was like, that's not three no. inches on both sides. If it's, that would give us three inches on both sides and three inches on top, which is what we were initially so guessing. How, how many inches? So we're just going to have like five inches now on the top since we can't come down those four. That's the Potentially. minus two. That's okay. I like the look of like higher looking trucks. It's, that means yeah, the cab's, yeah, cab's going to be higher. You typically right? want the wheel, the tire centered left, right, well, typically forward, we back, don't and up. Do what's typical. Yeah, I guess that's true. Okay, so the running boards are like eight inches lower than the cab. There's a little bit of a gap here. So eight inches plus another four and a quarter. No, it's going to be two. If we did the full four okay. and a quarter, we would be stepping about here. We would be 12 and a half, and right now we're at 25 and a half. So you'd have a foot of clearance basically off the ground on those running so boards. So we'd be stepping like here? Yep, where my thumb is at. That's, that's not bad actually. I like that. Now, if we only lowered it to two inches. Which is what sounds like we're going to be doing. It'll be right there. That's not bad either. And we'll be 10 and a half to 25 and a half. We'll be 15 and a half inches off the ground for the running board. Probably fine. <laughs> so the truck's it's pretty high. The truck's going to move around. We're going to be pulling this stuff. That'll be fine. We're just looking at a few things here before we go in for the night. And we were noticing, first off, the press for the holes here is the same as over there under your foot. And that's where the brake master cylinder reservoir would have been accessed. I think it's interesting, but Ford must have been mass producing these, stamping them so they could be used in a right hand or left hand drive application. And as soon as we realized that, we realized that the dash is actually identical left to right. So you got three holes in the middle, lower bar is the same. This glove box plate is the same size as the gauge plate over there. It's basically just flip the chassis and drive. Anyways, while we were in here, I thought, hey, you know what I should do? I should get a measurement from the floor down to the frame. And where are we? Five inches. Well, that's the top of the floor, the bottom of the floor, because there's actually a, a roll right there. That's why we cut it right there, because it's where two pieces are seamed together. Yeah. Right there to the bottom is basically four inches. So we don't even have four and a quarter inches that we could go down and still get a mounting block in between the cab and the frame to get our four and a quarter inch drop. But if we do the two inch drop, which I like better, then we can do a puck, which is one inch. So it'd be a three inch drop. Yeah. And then put the puck in, that'd be a two. 
Right, so we could still get three inch down, not four and a quarter. That's the lowest we can go. So basically our cab mounts, we're gonna have to make flush with the top of the frame rail. Or just run a pole right through the top of the frame rail, mount it flush to the frame rail. No fabrication necessary. Actually, once we get this thing, we need to get it squared up left to right to figure out exactly where because I want to use the factory mounting holes here and back here and over there. So I want to use the factory holes because these corners are actually reinforced and tied into the A-pillar and these are double plated in a big squared section underneath. So we can actually run our two by two square right inside of this rail underneath it and mount that right on the frame is my goal. Mm -hmm. So we need to figure out where this hole is going to line up with the frame once we get it squared up. And then we'll know how far out or how far in, or if our mounting block is, is actually going to be right through the frame. I don't know. Boy, problems you don't think about when you buy a truck out of your neighbor's field. Well, you know, I tell Caitlin all the time, if it's going to get done, Somebody's got to do it, and it might as well be you. No, it might as well be you. Might I, as well be us. I don't want to do it. You you do it. I don't want to do it. I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, neither. You know, this is just basic shade tree mechanic life. It's not about know-how. It's about figure out how, and we're going to figure out how one day. One day. Then we'll quit. <laughs> For those of you who are wondering about, you know, the structural integrity going on here, and I know there's some of you about to put something in the comments section about the structural integrity of a truck your daughter's gonna be driving. I get it, I know, I have the same concerns. But you gotta remember, this truck rolled off the assembly line basically a decade after the last Model A, and those things had wooden floors. And there's still guys out there running those things just as hard as they can go, two, maybe three times a year in a parade, so. <laughs> We should be fine. So the way I figure it, anything we can scrap together out of license plates and old road signs should be more than sufficient. Sounds about right. All right. That's a plan for tomorrow. Guys, as I watch the seasons come and go and the leaves change again, I'm reminded of just how short the time is that I have with our kids and how much I'm enjoying this phase of life with Caitlin, which of course reminds me of one of my favorite Bible verses. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way they should go. When they are old, they will not depart from it. All right, new day, same shirt. Well, not her, but we're going to get this out of here. Don't pop a wheelie. Is it in neutral? I think so. Are you sure? Keep going. No. Yeah, it's in neutral. Good. Ow, ow. Close the doors. Stop. Pull it just a little bit further back. It's good. It's gonna hit it. It's all right, we can move the crane now. All right, so what we've got here, Caitlin, are some marks we made last night. So we need to take a couple more measurements now that we have this apart. Um, we need to know actually how wide the chassis is from here to there, right across the middle. And then we need to measure the two front cab mounting holes that are 
here and here and the distance between those two because I think they're going to be right over top of the chassis, which means we may just need to set a rubber bushing here right next to the hot exhaust and just run a hole right down through the frame. And then wrap the exhaust. And yes, we'll wrap the exhaust right through there. Are we measuring the first the or the out, second line? To the outside of the frame. Okay. Outside of the frame? We're measuring the second line? Yes, the line you're on right there. So we're at 37 and a half inches. Where are you at? End of the hole. Just the hole, middle of the hole. Okay, that's where I was at. 37 inches, holy smokes. Yikes. What was this? 37 and a half. It'll yeah. fit, probably. All right, plan. So what we're going to do is center up a hole here. And since that hole, the plate that's reinforced actually comes out to right here where the crease is, we're going to elongate that hole. That'll give us a little bit of adjustment left to right as we're centering the cab. And if we put a hole right there in the frame, we can set a rubber bushing right on top of it. And you say, well, that's not the way to mount it. You got to have a tab. Well, there's no, it doesn't go out any further than that. Obviously the exhaust is inside of there. And oh yeah, Ford did that on the front end. The whole front clip was resting on rubber bushings bolted through the frame. So I think that's what we're going to do. Big washer on the bottom, bolt it through, and that'll give us a rear or a forward attachment point. The back here, I went ahead while Caitlin was at school today. I went ahead and got our four by four square tube and sorry, two by two square tube. Got it painted with uh, some rust inhibitor. If you guys are looking for some good rust inhibitor, the blackout rust preventative from Sweet Patina. That's what we painted the chassis with. That's what we're gonna paint the bottom side of the cab with. That's all painted, it's still a little tacky. So we're going to need to let that dry. The problem is, of course, this is a two by two square tube and that rear attachment point Stop walking away. is actually at a point in the chassis here that's coming up. It would have been so easy if we had been able to mount it here. The problem with that is you can see right across there, you're going to run into the drive shaft. Back here, if we keep it on top of the frame and square it up, we should be above the drive shaft and have no problem. We're going to have to touch this up a little bit. We clearly scraped some paint off here and got a little thin there with the rust preventative. Oh, right here too. I don't know if you guys remember this, but it started raining when we were spraying that on. So. Not the best application of it, but you know, we're building a 50 foot tr truck here, so. 50 foot? Yeah, it looks good from 50 feet away. <laughs> looks good. It is gonna look good. This could be our jack. You gotta tell people that's how you start it. You gotta pump it up. Hi. Right. Get everything pressurized. There's a hand crank in the front. Yeah. All right, a, a wind up thing. Let's get some holes drilled and then we're going to figure out how to mount that four by four on the back of there. And there are two offset cab mount bushings. Well done, Caitlin. Thanks. There you go. This one over here by the exhaust, Caitlin. Mm -hmm. I think we probably are gonna have to get on a saw and just go ahead and cut right along the frame. Wow. 
Wow, that is like butter. All right, so here's the rub. We're at a bit of a incline here running uphill. Does that mean we get the laser So again? I don't think we need a laser. We just need a level that we can hold right there and mark on it. Okay, so geometry, um, sometimes you're working in reverse. <laughs> That's perfect, which means we have the block for the other side. We just didn't need, need to cut it. All right, I think we can live with that right there. All right? Yeah. All right, Kaylin, you're done drawing on the uh, wood block there. Next thing we need to do is get this rear mounting geometry figured out. I think that square tube is going to have to be mitered so it can lay on top of this and be flat at this mounting point here, <sighs> which just means we're going to have to transfer some geometry again, which I just demonstrated I'm great at. but. Pay attention? I am. Yeah. Geometry, not good at it. <laughs> Correct. All right. First thing we're going to have to do here is get a measurement width here. And I'm doing this here because actually the frame gets wider as Hi. it goes back. It narrows here and comes to the front. So this is actually 38 inches. All right, Caitlin, now with the cutoff here from that square tube, so what we're gonna do is clamp it on the inside here until that's like that, so it's level. We'll mark it, and then we'll take this line right through here, and we'll cut it off. We'll use that piece we cut off to be our pattern on the other one for what we need to cut so that when we set it on here, basically the width of the frame, which is incredibly, that piece right there, the width of the frame will be notched and it'll lay over the frame and we can run a, a weld here and a weld across the front. It's not the thickest wall material I've, we've ever used, but it's what I have here. So we will uh, we'll work with it. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think if we plate it down the outside of the frame, we'll clean all this off with a wire wheel and a and a flappy disc. Get a solid plate on the outside of it. It should hold it, no problem. All right now, for the kind of precision guesswork that we're doing, I think we can live with that, can't we, Caitlin? I mean, yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right. We're going to mark this and then I'm going to get you to flap disc the paint off of that and write it on the side. And then once we get this tacked in here, we'll square up the end so it's flush with the outside of the frame and get a plate on there and plate it in. Okay? All right. Three, two, one, go. Like to work. Go to go now. Oh. All right, it got dark on us, and we found a cat. But, tell me if that doesn't look like it's been there its whole life. And, oh, rubber bushing's actually already in the garage. So, what we're gonna do real quick in the dark here is 
get this cab back up on the chassis roughly where it's supposed to be, Caitlin. And we're going to push it back in the light so we can see what we're doing. All right. Well, if you guys have been watching for a while, you know that it's basically been a month, maybe a little bit more since we worked on this truck. And the last thing we did was we got the suspension put together so we could roll it out, literally do an engine out to get the oil pan out of it, stop leaking. What do we notice when we had it out? An oil leak. So, yeah. What is it? Caitlin's gonna roll underneath there and figure that out real quick. I figured it out. We forgot to tighten the drain plug. All right, while Caitlin's getting the oil drain plug tightened up, I'm looking in here at what we're gonna have to trim. And it looks like this corner is gonna, which is fine because actually there's a big hole here where the how Where tight does this PTO need to be? Levers used to go through. Just get it snug so it's not leaking. What do you mean how tight does it have to be? Well, some things are hand tight, some things are tight tight. That's tight tight, but not like strip it out tight, just snug tight. That's snug tight. It's tight. So we're going to cut the corner off of here, come right inside of this hole that was ripped in the floor for the PTO levers. We're going to come right inside of that, and when we build our, our trans tunnel back, We'll just build it right to here to the edge of that. And then it looks like it's probably going to have to come all the way back to here for the transmission. And we'll end up, we'll end up just taking this little pie shape out right here. All right. So before we start cutting, it's just worth noting that this line lines up with that line right there. So we're basically where we think we ought to be in order to get the wheel well centered over this front, uh, front, not an axle, it's a independent, anyways, over the front uh, center line of the wheels. And this one is about two inches back. So the cab's going to have to come like this. But we may still have to cut this guy out because I think this might be too narrow for this frame. We'll see. If it squeezes on there, it'll probably end up rattling pretty bad. And like this right now, yeah, it's, we're gonna have to cut that out. But we'll get to that in a second. First, let's get the cab cut. down ish it's actually sitting on those wings on top of the frame so we do need to cut those and it'll get down i'll hold it well i want to see where we're actually at back here it's not it's definitely not center okay so i'm looking here this square tube needs to go back here to this hole so it's got to go forward Looks like about an inch. What's it currently sitting on? Dude, I don't know. This truck literally just levitates. I have no clue what that it's side, on. That side over there looks like it's lower than this side. What's it sitting on? This side, it's sitting on the bar. It is down on the bar? Uh, there's a wood block there. What? Yeah. There's still a wood block in there? I think that's well, what it is. you have a new job. Get that wood block out. Sure, let me just lift it up and get under it at the same time. Get that light out of the cab. Ew. Wood block. Yep. I've seen wood blocks before, and that is definitively a wood block. Wow. All right. Crazy. I think we just need to pry that out of there. Wait, which one of us is lifting up the cab? I'm gonna lift the cab up. You're gonna put that pry bar right through here. I hate being upside down. Me too. Can you get that pry bar right in there? All right, ready? One, two, three. 
Ow! Oh, face. Ow! Right in the face. At least I have the glasses on. So <laughs> that landed you guys can smack see. in the middle of my face. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Wait, don't move. <laughs> Oh man, there's an imprint, like a square print of the side of that block where it just like dunk. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, but you guys can see what we're dealing with here. This is the hole we want to put a bolt through. Um, this is the extra bracing that goes back into the, the, uh, the back wall of the truck, which is why we want to use that factory mount. And it's got to go forward about an inch, which is a little distressing to me because um, the back of this is already on the frame. So we might have to go higher. No. All right. We've got to go ahead and cut the bottom out of that right there. And it does look like we are going to have to cut some more out of the top there. So when this comes down. We're not rubbing on the turbo. You might want to clean your face. It's going to end up bruising up. <laughs> Bruise. All right, quick time lapse. Well, we're kind of at that stage, guys, where we're perpetually just one cut away from being finished. I did cut more out of the top, thinking it would be enough, but when it sat down, boy, it sat down right on top of the turbo. So we are gonna have to continue this cut up above here. Hopefully that clears it, because I would like to have a little bit of a flange here to be able to bolt to. That's right, bolt. The doghouse trans tunnel is gonna be a bolt-in unit. Doghouse. And that's because if we don't do that, there will literally never be a way to get the valve covers off for injector service. So, Wait, so the turbo is going to be in the cab? Well, it's going to be inside the doghouse, but yes. Oh, that, isn't that interesting? Yeah, that's going to require some serious amount of heat insulation. That's going to be hot. Fabrication. Yeah, probably a double wall doghouse with an air gap in between to let it dissipate heat. With some fire resistant heat insulation, we should be good. All right, this was kind of cut haphazardly. We can clean it up and square it up side to side and when we rebuild the floor back, we'll rebuild it nice and, uh, nice and square. You won't even know it's there. It does look like we're down on the uh, frame. So we're gonna have to get that up and get the bushing in there drop the bolts through, and uh, that might be our next step here, guys. Actually, I know what our next step is. We need to get it off of the turbo. So, uh, so I knew this, but I wasn't thinking about this, but this engine is actually not square in this truck. It's not centered. It is favored to the passenger side. That's because of this power steering and room for the steering shaft. So this side of the engine bay is going to have a nice clean line on that doghouse. This side over here, we're probably going to go ahead, follow this line and come right out here and just bring this down. So we've got room to work and remove that valve cover at some point. All right. So what you've got here is what I think the professionals would call a, a fluid situation. Uh, the plan for the firewall is being reevaluated <laughs> as we speak. But we do have a hole big enough that I think it'll finally sit back down. So we've got blocks underneath the cab right now. We're going to pull the blocks out, get it down, bring it forward, get our bushings in place, and see if we can line up those bolt holes. Ah, shoot, we gotta make the bolt holes in the floor bigger. Good night. This is like the night that never ends. 
<laughs> well, we made our holes just, uh, you could say the right size <laughs> and in the right place. All right. We'll just push them We've out. got the rubber bushing underneath. I'm going to pick the cab up. Caitlin's going to pull the blocks out that we have in there. And the bushing came out. Quickly, I'm holding it. You see the hole? Hold on. You see the hole? Yeah. Do you have the bushing the right way? Yeah. That's about it. Something like that. Okay. Yeah, we're, we got some more cutting to do in here. Of course we do. Of course we do. We're just going to be left with no truck. Of course we do. What needs to be cut? This is sitting on top of this sensor. Come over uh, here. Come over here. Parkour. Oh, parkour. Just hold this up. Got clearance on the exhaust, clearance on the trans cooler lines, clearance left to right on the transmission. Let's get the way out from right here. Come on, speed. Speedy quick. Speed and power. Speed and power, that's the solution. Do I do it without knocking? One, two, three. Okay. Is the hockey puck still there? Is that the, where the steering wheel needs to go? Well, steering shaft, yes, is gonna have to come through here. It should be fine, right? We do have room for it, so with a couple of U-joints, it should, it should work. I'm gonna get down here and pick the cab up. Take the weight off of it. You're gonna force the bushing back. It's gotta come back about a half an inch, you see it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is it lined up? I mean, it's lined up, but it's not. I'll lift the cap when you do it. Move your butt. No. Oh, well, I never noticed that before. That's cool. Okay. Now, I think it needs to go forward. So you tell me when that drops in there. Are you getting anywhere? I don't know what I've ever done this before. I can tell you right now, we've got a bit of a problem. <sighs> Big sigh. Start with a pin. Oh, I can see daylight through there. What? Where? Look, look down through that hole. You can see daylight. Well, yeah, but it's really just garage light. <laughs> Do I correct anybody? Hammer! Question is, is it is it centered left or right? Doesn't matter as long as it rolls. Does down matter. The road. It does matter, and it does actually look like it's pretty centered left or right. Why wouldn't it be? I can think of about a dozen reasons. Nah. Yeah. Faux show. Also, no longer clearing the transmission cooler line, and also. Barely cooling. Barely. What's the word I'm looking for? Clearing. Clearing. Thank you. Late at night. No problem. Transmission. Anytime. I'm here um, until Tuesday. Not I see really. a square tube underneath this, which is good news. I think if we put a bushing under there, it'll get this up 
So it's not sitting here, which would be perfect. Let's get that other bolt figured out. One eternity later. Okay, Caitlin, show them what we got done. Um, can you put them through on both sides? Both cab mounts in the front, in the holes, and look where we landed. Bingo and bongo, right there. So our cab is exactly where we wanted it to be on both sides. Um, haven't put a tape measure on it, eyeballing it. Just looking down here through the gap on both sides, it looks, it looks like it's square. Um, we're going to definitely get a tape measure on the back corners real quick if we need to give a little bit of push left or right. And then we're gonna drop drill bits down through the two stock mounting holes. And once we have the holes drilled, then we'll put our bushings in there. Dropper three and a half inch grade eight bolts through the back, this plate and that plate over there. And the cab will be done, mounted. I had hoped this week to get the front clip on as well. No, these are pretty even. It's just with, Caitlin is finishing up her volleyball season. Next two weekends are tournaments. She leaves tomorrow for the tournament. Um, it's not gonna happen. So, so hang in there for a couple more minutes. We'll get those back bolts dropped in and then we'll kind of wrap this thing up here this week. So here we go. All right, it's the same one. frame to rocker on that side is seven inches, sweetheart. Yep. I told you right here. Oh yeah, seven inches. To the rocker. What were you measuring over there? Not that. Here? Yes. It's still seven inches. So, it's the same. What were you measuring right here? Yes, seven inches. And the same on that side too. Okay, you, see, you see this right here? Yeah. Okay, that is, that is five and three quarters. Maybe five and 13 sixteenths. What is that one over there? Almost six, like five, five and 14 sixteenths. <laughs> well, that would be five and three quarters. That is a solid six. No, it is not. Look at that. Yes, it is where we were measuring on the other side, which just means we need to bump this, put that back there. We just need to bump this. Right here is where I was measuring. Leave it right there. Okay, we're at five and 13 sixteenths right there. Go to the other side real quick. Take a look. Five and 13 sixteenths. Yo! Let's punch some holes in the floor. All right, now the test. Four bolts are in. Are we still square? Five and thirteen sixteenths. Give, give, give. Five and thirteen. Five and thirteen sixteenths. Corner, corner, back, back. My back dirty. All mounted. We've got some cleanup to cut here. We don't have the nuts. Yeah, your back is filthy. We don't have the nuts on there yet because I learned my lesson. I learned. The last time I did this, you don't want to have your cab completely locked down when you're trying to fit the front clip. So that is going to give us the flexibility we need next week to get this front clip mounted with our new cold case aluminum radiator, which we didn't even get to introduce to you guys yet, but that'll be next week. So stay tuned. It's coming your way. See you next time.